I'm Laura Nelson, and I can tell you the moment when the phrase Lamb of God meant something to me. The moment when it clicked. I was a member at this parish, I've been here for 20 years, and I was a young mother in one of these rooms over here studying the book of Exodus. And we were learning about the Passover meal and the sacrifice of the unblemished lamb. And suddenly it all came together. And I got so excited. I said, guys, 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 Jesus is the Lamb of God. And they all looked at me and kind of smiled and nodded their heads and thought I was a little bit nuts. I said, no, 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 listen, listen, listen. You, you have to understand this. Jesus is the unblemished Lamb of God, the sacrifice. And again, they all smiled because they had known this for years. <laughs> I was slow on the uptake. But I tell you, that moment can never be taken away from me. It's mine. You can borrow it if you want to. But for me, it's mine. This revelation, this epiphany that I had that was so meaningful to me, is what we offer the children in our Catechesis of the Good Shepherd program. We guide them to these moments so that they are, this knowledge of God and his love for us is theirs forever and it can't be taken away. Now, I could induce sleep by telling you about the pedagogical theory and the methodology, but I'm not gonna do that because you already got that extra hour of sleep. Right now, I wanna show you one small presentation. And because we're all children of God, no matter what our age, today you are the children, and you're gonna receive this presentation as you would in our atrium. We immerse the children in scripture and liturgy. And we even show them that before people come to Mass, before you and I have arrived, there's been a lot of preparations for the Mass. And one of the things that's prepared are the cruets. Someone has come before us to prepare. Children, we know that someone has come to prepare the cruets before Mass. Let me show you what the priest does during Mass to prepare for the consecration. Now, because I'm short in stature like Zacchaeus, I'm going to lift this up <laughs> so you can see. It's so red, isn't it? How much wine did I pour in the glass? All of it, right? All of it. How much water did I put in? Just a little bit, right? Just a little bit. Why do you think there is so much wine in the chalice? Would you like a hint? I like hints. It's because the wine represents God. So if the wine represents God, why is there so much wine in the chalice? Because God is so big. Usually the children give me that answer and I don't have to give it to them. <laughs> but you're shy children and that's okay. It's early in the morning. So if, if the wine represents God, what does the water represent? Hmm, that's a harder one, isn't it? The water represents us. So, why do you think there's just a little bit of water in the chalice? What do you think, children? Because we're smaller. Thank you, Malia. We are so small in comparison to God, aren't we? Now, if I were to ask you to take the water back out of the wine, would you be able to do it? No. No. What do you think that says about our relationship with God? We are mixed. We can never be separated from him. Now, when, when the children get older, we introduce to them the prayer of the priest that is said at this point in the Mass. 
And most of the time, we don't hear it because there's beautiful music playing. But I'm going to share these words with you. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Now, the first time I ever received this presentation as an adult, I was with Father Flynn. And our response to this was first just profound silence. And then Father Flynn said, they didn't teach us that in seminary. (laughs) And we all kind of laughed. It's beautiful. And this is right before our eyes at every Mass. And I was raised Catholic and never knew this. I never thought of myself as being part of the consecration, part of what is offered back up to God and thanks, being so close to God that I can't be separated from him. Now, this is just one small presentation that hopefully gives you a taste of what Catechesis of the Good Shepherd is about. There's far, far more that I could spend this hour, two, three, four, we could spend all day with me telling you about it. But that's not what we're here for. I hope that this gives you an idea of what Catechesis of the Good Shepherd is about, but I also hope that this knowledge of what's about to happen right here behind me changes the way you receive the rest of the Mass today. I hope that you see yourself in the water, in those small drops. I hope that you remember that you're joined with God and you can't be separated. And I hope you remember that you're being offered up to him in praise and thanksgiving. I love this program. It's a beautiful method. But you can't love it if you don't know it. So that's why I'm here today. If you'd like to know more about it, I'll be in the narthex after Mass. Thank you so much for not falling asleep. Thank you, Laura. Every parent who has a child in this program loves this program. Thank you. What it does is it's not just our traditional form of religious education. It helps to create a relationship with God for these children. And as a parent, our worry, one of our worries is how can we keep our children Catholic? Once they you know, finish high school, most of them go away. That's one of the worries that every parent has. How can I keep my children Catholic? This program is going to help because it creates a, a relationship with God for this child, a relationship that lasts forever. And this formation center is to help to you know, grow our children. And we will have three levels of this catechism of the Good Shepherd. Right now we have level one, that is for ages three to six. And then we have another one, six to nine, and then nine to 12. It's not based on grades, but it's at age level. And our children are learning great things about our faith. One of our four-year-old children went home after after I had been here for a month. She went and told her parents, Father Sojan at Mass, when it comes to epiclesis, he's not raising his hand enough. (laughs) Well, remember, it's a four-year-old. I didn't know what epiclesis was until I joined the seminary. Epiclesis is when the priest raises his hand over the gifts and invites the Holy Spirit to come down on this water and wine so that it may be changed into the body and blood of Jesus Christ. And this kid's complained was that I was not raising my hand, you know. Every time I celebrate Mass, I remember that kid now. (laughs) Well, in fact, she is here at Mass. She's sitting right there. She's the one who is answering those questions. I'm not making up this story, okay? And she's four years old. She's one of our preschool children, and she's learning this at the Catechesis of the Good Shepherd. So now, I invite all of you to please read through our bulletin this week. We have a four-page brochure explaining all about our new formation center. 
and please learn about it and please prayerfully consider how you can support it. Like last week I said, those of you who made a three-year pledge, can you prayerfully consider adding another year to it? If you made a 36-month 36 36 pledge, can you make it a 48-month? For those of you who made a one-time pledge, can you prayerfully consider making another sacrificial gift? For those of you who recently joined the parish and who didn't have an opportunity to support this capital campaign, can you prayerfully consider making a pledge to this campaign? Or if you did not have a chance, or some of your financial situation did not permit you to make a commitment last year, can you prayerfully consider making a commitment? If all of us can come together, we can make this, we can make this happen. I had people tell me last week, Father, if I win a lottery, I'll give you a, a million dollars. Well, I asked him, when was the last time you took a lottery ticket? You know, start right there. Well, we don't have to win lottery to, you know, help this project. What we are asking is a sacrificial gift. What you can do. Every gift is important. And no matter the amount that you can give, what we are asking is for a sacrificial gift. So you will receive a letter from me in this week asking you to prayerfully consider making a pledge with a pledge envelope and a pledge card. Please return this next Sunday or the following Sunday when we are doing our commitment Sunday. That's the 16th and the 17th. Or you could mail it back in. Or also you have an option that says, I cannot make a financial commitment, but I will prayerfully, or I will pray for the success of the campaign. We are asking every family to do that. Well, if you don't do that, our campaign committee will call you. So, so go, please go ahead and do it so that you don't, have, you, know, you don't have to be called. If you cannot make a sacrificial gift, just put down, I cannot make a gift at this time, but I'll pray for this, the success of our capital campaign. So please keep this, our capital campaign, in, our, in, in your prayers and please prayerfully consider how you can support. More than all that, please read the bulletin, this four-page brochure. It explains everything that we are going to do in this phase two of the campaign. <laughs>